Hey everybody, sorry I haven't been around, I had an ankle problem, but I'm feeling better now. Real quick, before we start, I just want to show you these awesome pants that I got. These are like rubber, heat retaining, sweat pants. Thanks to those who donated. I wasn't able to get point shoes because there's some Grishko problems happening, so I used some of the money to get some warm-ups. And these really do make you sweat, and I love them so much, especially because I'm one of those people that is always cold. It takes me forever to warm up, especially in the winter. So these are perfect, and I'm so excited. But for now, I'm going to roll them up so you can kind of see what my knees are doing, because we're going to do some tendu combinations from first position, starting with the beginner level. We're going to do a beginner, an intermediate, and an advanced. Quick reminders about turnout. Your turnout comes from your hips and your thighs and your butt. You can start by standing with your feet in parallel and just rotate your thighs outward and as far as your thighs will go, that's basically your turnout. So you have to use your thighs to maintain that position. Do not rely on pushing your ankles forward for turnout because that has never helped anybody do anything. So for beginners, quick reminder, your posture is your tailbone is straight down, you can't stick your butt out, and you're also kind of lifting out of your hips, energy through the top of your head, keep your thighs rotating outwards, maintain that turnout, almost so that your butt cheeks come together, like the bottoms of your butt cheeks kiss. And here we go, tendu from first for beginners. Now I am going to pause and talk a lot, I want to give you a lot of details, a lot of tips, so here we go. Right away, if you want to get in the habit of coordinating your head and your leg, the Russians like to use their head as a counterweight to the leg. So when you do your first tendu front, your head tilts back ever so slightly. Your eyes are still just looking out, okay? You don't want to crunch your neck to look up at the ceiling. It's not like that. You're looking out and your head is just the tiniest bit back as if you're completing a diagonal line from your foot. Part of this is because they have raked stages where they pitch downstage, so your head will kind of help you keep your weight centered. If you were on a slanty floor, it would be very easy for you to lose balance if your head was in the wrong place. So your head helps you keep your center, and it also looks pretty. It makes it interesting. So with that little tip in mind, you want to use your head. Let's try again. Uh, but wait, I gotta stop again. So the turnout of your thigh is a full circle. It makes a continuous circle, so the back of your thighs connect to your inner thighs, and your inner thighs pull the leg forward. Like my leg rotated in a circle and now my inner thigh is pulling the leg forward and then those same muscles to pull it back into first position. So tendu is really dominated by your leg stretching and rotating and lengthening in a spirally kind of feeling. It's a very deliberate, very careful movement. You have to massage the floor with the ball of your foot, almost like your foot is, is resisting the movement and your leg is forcing it to go. Don't just flop your leg out there without purpose. Don't bend your knee or plop your foot. It, it has to be intentional. Some teachers use the word spiral. I like to imagine like my thigh muscle is a corkscrew trying to go into the floor and my foot is the tip of the corkscrew. All right, let's try to get back to this combination. I'm going to give you three tendu devant. Devant just means front. So three tendu front to first position and then plie in first position, bend your knees. Another tendu in the same direction, but press the ball of your foot to the floor for a demi point. Close in first, and then one more tendu and you're going to plie in fourth position. Make sure your weight is evenly distributed between your legs. Your knees are going to want to twist forward, but you have to bend them evenly to the side. And then here comes another tip about turnout. When you plie, don't focus so much on twisting your knees and your ankles for turnout. Think of your turnout more like a ball that you press down evenly with your butt. I know that sounds a little weird, but it's like you're just pressing directly down vertically under your pelvis between your thighs. This keeps the focus and the intention in your hips and pelvis where your turnout should be starting from. Beginners tend to get caught up in the footwork and turn out from their ankles, but you don't want to use your ankles for turnout because that does not guarantee alignment. Are we ever going to finish this tendu combination? I don't know. But I'm going to recap the entire pattern. One more time. Three tendus forward, 
then plie in first. Then we're going to do another tendu forward, still corkscrewing the thigh with a demi point and your rotation keeping that heel forward. One more tendu, plie in fourth. Remember, evenly distribute your weight between the legs with your thighs keeping your knees to the side. Transfer back to the standing leg. So we just completed the entire pattern to the front. Now when we do this pattern to the side, our head stays looking forward. So we're going to do the three tendus to the side. Keep stretching your legs and do not copy my arms. I'm trying to help you visualize turnout. You just hold your arm in second position. And then plie in first. Another tendu to the side, or a la seconde, and then add that same demi point, still rotating your thighs back to first. One final tendu to the side with a plie in second position, your weight evenly distributed just as fourth position. All right, so now I have to stop for another tip. Sorry, I said I was gonna stop a lot. You don't need to know this, but I want you to have the option of learning it anyway. When you do these plies in your tendu combinations, for example, when we do plie fourth, your arm closes in first. And then when we do a plie to the second position, the arm goes all the way down before going to first. All right, one more time. When you do your plie, in fourth position, your arm just cuts right in front of you. Your arm goes in front of you to first position and opens back up again. But when you plie in second position, the arm goes all the way down. It scoops all the way down and then up to first position. Uh, same thing when you plie fourth to the back, the arm just cuts right in front of you. It's up to you if you want to try. I know this is a lot of information. So let's try doing this pattern to the back, derriere. Remember your head is a counterweight and it will lean slightly forward, but do not bend the neck. When your leg goes back, your head is the counterweight, very slightly forward. Again, this is just to complete the line of your body and also it goes back to those slanted stages where if too much weight is going back, you'll probably fall back on the slanty floor. Tundu back or tundu arabesque is probably the hardest because the legs really want to turn in but you can't let them. Imagine that you have strings on the front of your thighs and they're being pulled from the outer side to pull your leg back behind you. But in this case, we let our toes start the movement so that the whole leg doesn't turn in. And then your heel comes forward to bring the leg back to first. Keep the ball of your foot on the floor as long as possible. This will prevent your toes from crunching under you and collapsing your foot. So if you have uh, remembered this pattern by now, you'll know that we have three tendus, and then a plie in first, and then we do another tendu, same direction with a demi point, ball of the foot touches the floor, close to first, a tendu, and plie into fourth position, point, and then return to first. Repeat the same thing to the next side. This entire pattern went front, side, back, side. And you may not remember all these head and arm details, but that's okay. For now, I just want you to get familiar with the directions that your legs are going. So we're going to actually flip the camera and take a close look at the legs. In ballet, your only leg positions are front, side, and back in varying heights. Your leg doesn't really go diagonal unless you're passing from one position to the next or if your whole body is on a diagonal line. When your leg visits these positions in order, front, side, back, it's called en croix, which means in the shape of the cross. You are following the lines of a cross or a compass if you prefer. Tendu is the first combination to train your muscles to hit these points precisely every time. And most beginner combinations are done en croix, so if you can remember the pattern to the front, you just need to repeat the same thing to the side and back. This tendu combination is en croix, so the same thing happens in the same order in all directions. So we start with three tendus from first position, and we start the combination to the front. And then we have a plie. And then another tendu with a demi point. Point, return to first. Final tendu with a plie on both feet, and then return to first. Same thing to the side. Three tendu to the side. Then with a plie. One more tendu, demi point, point, return to first. Final tendu, plie evenly between your feet, and return to first. Same thing derriere, three tendu arabesque. Come to first position, 
plie. Another tendu in the same direction, demi point, point, close first. Your final tendu has a plie on both feet, return to first. To complete the full en croix, the full cross, you do the same thing to the side once more. Three tendu, plie, tendu, demi point, point, close first. Final tendu finishes with a plie between the legs, close first. Now we're going to move on to a tendu from first for intermediate. So it's going to be a little faster. And we're going to switch the directions. So we're going to do three tendu front, plie fourth, close first. Same thing to the side. We just learned this. Three tendu side, plie second, and then close. Then we're going to go front again, mix it up. We're going to do a full en croix, front side, back side. And then we're going to plie, roll up, and do a little balance in first. So this is not intuitive. We do three, tendu to the back, plie in fourth position. We just learned this in the beginner level. Three, tendu to the side, plie in second. Now instead of completing the cross by going front again, we start over, back, side, then front, then side. And a plie, roll up. So this is a little more difficult for the brain because we didn't follow the cross positions in order. We didn't go front side, back side. We went front side, front again, side, back side. So how about a closer look? Three, tendu to the front, plie to the fourth. Similar to the beginner level tendu. Same thing to the side, three to the side, and then a plie. But instead of going back now, we start front again, then side, then back, then side, and then a plie, roll up. So we're straying from the traditional front side back order. We're going back three, plie in fourth, return to first. Same thing side, three tendu. Plie between your legs, point, close. Back again, side, front, side, and a plie, roll up. So we completed a pattern to the front, did the same thing to the side, and then start it over to do an en croix, front again, side, back, side, and then reversed it. So to make a tendu from first combination more advanced, we're going to switch the working legs and use our arms. So three tendu devant, and we're going to balancois back and front. Then we're going to switch legs, inside leg, back three times, balancois front, back. We're going to use the arm and the head, do another full en croix, and then we're going to do seven tendu fast alisagone using the full porte bras. Reverse, three tendu derriere, balancois, front, back. Inside leg switch, front, three tendu, balancois, back, front. Then we do en croix, using the arm, using the head. And then we're going to do seven fast tendu alisagone with an andedan porte bras. So tendu isn't necessarily physically demanding, but the extra coordination is what makes it more advanced. You have to think of using the head, and if it's advanced and you're switching the legs, you have to think of switching your legs, what direction your legs are going in, and you're adding the arm and still using your head positions with all these arms. Sometimes the combination gets faster, so you have to manage all these quick, brisk leg movements while keeping a smooth upper body. It's just a lot of coordination. It's like patting your head and rubbing your belly. Beginners, you're welcome to try the intermediate level. Intermediates, you're welcome to try the advanced level. You're unlikely to injure yourself with tendu, but this is going to feel like a tongue twister for your body. If you want to give it a shot, but the head and the arms are still just too much for you to remember, we can try just focusing on the feet once more. Let's flip the camera. So we did three tendu to the front, and then we did a balançois, which is brushing through first position. Then we did the inside leg back, but the same pattern. Three, and then a balançois front and back. And then we did a tendu en croix, en dehors. One front, one side, one back, one side. And then we did seven fast to the side, and then we reversed. So now outside leg back, three. And then balançois, brush front, brush back. Inside leg front, three. And then balançois, brush back, brush front. En croix, reverse, back, side, front, side, and then seven, fast. So there it is. This was a popular request. Could I do a combination or a demonstration and give a beginner version, an intermediate version, and an advanced version? I may continue doing these with other combinations. And just thank you again to those who donated. I was able to get these awesome pants.
and I love them. They're perfect for the winter. So thank you so much. Until next time, see you later.